thank the Lord. And we welcome the presence of God in this place. Today was, um, is a day that we're setting aside to, to acknowledge and, and worship the Lord. And you know, it ought to be a continuation of our worship, our daily worship unto the Lord. Um, today is especially special because we're also giving thanks to God and commemorating the fact that He came to this earth as a man. He was all God, all man. Uh, and he came because he loved us. He came because we were lost in sin and headed to destruction and headed to hell. But, but the Bible says, but God, so rich is he in his love and mercy, because of his love for us, he came and he died for us. And so he would have never been able to die for us if he'd never been born. So we want to take time to just thank the Lord for coming to this earth and and loving us, um, Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Amen? His kingdom will never end. It is eternal. And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with just judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And so at this time, let's just worship Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And let's just thank him because he has come to this world. Amen. He came to the world to seek and to save that which was lost. And aren't you glad that Jesus has found you? Amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and just begin to thank God because he's good, because he loves you. The Bible says, says, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We can't just clap and have our mouths shut. It says, clap your hands and shout with the voice of triumph. So as you're clapping, you're shouting unto God. As you're clapping, your mouth is open and giving glory unto His name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This song here says, it's an invitation that says, Come let us adore Him. I think we all know it. I think we've been hearing it. If you've been shopping or in your car listening to Christmas music. So you should all know this song. Oh, come let us adore Him. Amen. So we're going to sing this song unto the Lord. And, and we're inviting each one of you to come and let us adore the King of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. We adore you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus.
has just been so ministering to me this entire week and it's Psalm 511 and it says but let those who trust in the Lord ever um, rejoice in the Lord and let them ever shout for joy amen so so I know a lot of times we say I trust God but but um, but we're not rejoicing 
And we say, I trust God, and maybe he sees us with a sad face and still worrying. But here, the word of God is telling us, those that trust in God, there is no fear. There is no worry. There is no complaining, but they rejoice. Why? Because they know that God is their help. They know that God rescues them, and he's their shield. Amen? So at this time, these are songs of rejoicing and of joy. And if you trust in the Lord, I pray that you rejoice. Amen. How many are ready to rejoice in the Lord?
highest. Jesus, what a wonderful name, amen. <laughs> Jesus, what a bountiful provider. Jesus, what a faithful friend. Jesus, what a compassionate healer. The angel said to the Virgin Mary, you shall call his name what? And he shall save his people from their sins. We thank God, Jesus, that perfect sacrifice came down to save some very imperfect people. Amen? Amen? And we just thank God. If there are anybody uh, here today that has the right for joy, it's God's people. Amen? If anybody who has a right to get all crazy and get all messed up, I think it's God's children. Amen? So we thank God for this day. We thank God for joy and grace. Amen? If we have visitors here today, we'd like you to, uh, if you could fill out this form. It's help us to get connected. Uh, we tell a little bit about what's going on uh, during the week, as well as our small groups. Helps you get to know a few people from the church. Amen. Journey to Bethlehem this Wednesday. If you all come down, bring your family and friends, neighbors, relatives. Journey to Bethlehem is going to happen this Wednesday. We have mandatory practice this Friday at 7 p.m. for all the AJC cast members, visual performers, ballerinas, ribbon girls, Christmas tree people, sheep. And if you're in the cast, you have practice this Friday. Amen? At 7 o'clock. December 21st. Say the 21st. 
at 1 p.m. Modesto High Auditorium. Remember, this is a one service only. It's the greatest gift musical. Amen. We have tickets in the back. It's a free event, but these tickets uh, allow you to, it's, it's very easy to slip on in to your coworker, amen, to, to your family, uh, to your friends, your neighbors. Invite them to the greatest gift musical. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. We're very excited. And I encourage all our members, um, get involved. There is so much to do, amen, whether it's backstage, ushering, greeting, whether it's you want to be in the cast, you want to sing a solo, you ain't singing a solo, it's too late for that. But you could come and you could be a part of this greatest gift musical amen this doesn't happen with just you know four or five people this happens with AJC amen it does not happen without our congregation so we need your help come and get involved uh, make yourself available nothing else is more important than to serve God's people amen what does joy stand for we learned on Wednesday from sister Janet joy is Jesus others than you amen Jesus others you so let this make this a priority uh, this week to come out and get ready to serve God's people and show Modesto the real reason for the season. Amen? So with the help of our ushers, we're going to pick up our offering. Praise the Lord, somebody. Can we just lift up our hands this afternoon? Come on, just worship the Lord for just a moment. How many of you know your God is great and greatly to be praised? How many you really know your God is great? Come on, lift up your hands and just worship the Lord for just a moment. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, can we just sing that together as a congregation? Come on, somebody said, how great, how great. Is our God, sing with me. Is our God, is our God, and all. Oh. Come on, somebody said, how great, how great is our God. Come on, let's sing that one more time with our hands raised. Somebody said, how great, how great, how great is our God, is our God. Is our God and all oh, how great, how great all oh, is our God, how great is our God, how great is come on, how great is our God, Lord, we lift up our hands.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth the thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious moon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Truly He taught us to love one another His law is love and His gospel is peace Change shall He break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we with all our hearts we praise his glorious name whose christ is the lord Jesus Christ came into this world to save all of us from all harm. Merry Christmas, everybody. I pray that you and your family are blessed this season. God bless all of you. Merry Christmas, AJC.
from glory many things you are on earth a holy king a carpenter you are the living word bread, bread of hell sin now from glory many things so glad that you can call him by name and he'll know who you are aren't you so glad that we have 
someone that was born just to die for you and me. But the awesome thing about that is that he's not dead anymore, but he still lives. He's more alive today than ever. And because he lives, that means you have another chance. Because he lives, you can take another step. Because he lives, you can live another day. Do I have somebody in the house that can call him by name? Yeah, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. Major Paul, but on the tree. You got to sit down. That's what we call. That's what we call you. Made your born but on a tree. Made your born but on a tree. You died to save you now. The tea. You are the living word. 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 that were listening and in the midst there were there were a lot of you know of course he was he was speaking to Jewish people and he was speaking a message that was so confounding to them a message they had never heard and it offended so many of them because he said unless you eat of my flesh my bread and unless you drink my blood you cannot have eternal life and and a lot of the people that were following Jesus they began to turn away because they said this is hard teaching what does he mean he's, he's talking about cannibalism what's going on and and Jesus says you know you, you your fathers ate the manna that fell fell um, in the wilderness and he said but that was not the bread of heaven he says I am the bread of life I am the bread that comes from heaven hallelujah and unless we eat the blood eat the bread of heaven unless we we take in Jesus's body and unless we drink of his blood through repentance through forgiveness and following Jesus we cannot have eternal life come on and so now we're just gonna sing that God I will I accept you into my heart I accept you into my life God come and just change and uh, do a radical transformation even in my thinking God it might not be the way that I've always been thinking that things should be that this is right and this is wrong I want to follow you and I want you to just mess up even everything about me because I want to be right in your eyes and not my own eyes come on saying you are the bread of life you are the bread of life I want to eat you you are the bread of life I want to drink your blood Jesus you are the living word and you are the living word you are you are the living word you are the living word. I don't want no one and nothing else more than Jesus. Is that your prayer today? Is that your heart's cry today? That you don't want no one else but Jesus. There's a song that we sing and it says, all we want and all we need is found in Jesus. Amen. This song is called More and More. And this is what we're, this is our heart's cry and desire. That all we want and all we need is found in Jesus. Yes. No one and nothing else will do. And I, I challenge all of you, each of you that are here, 
uh, especially those that have been maybe searching and you don't understand where you are and why things have happened in your life, God has brought you here today and he's made a way, has been his grace that has woken you up this morning and has brought you to this house because he wants to draw you in closer to him. And no matter how far you search, no matter how, how deep and wide that you search for the answer and, and to feel that void in your heart, you'll never find it until you, you find it in Jesus. Song just says, all we want and all we need is found in Jesus. Just want to invite you, those of you that, that are worshipers, just worship the Lord in spirit and in truth at this time. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
Christmas isn't just the things under the tree. It is what came in a manger. It was God manifested in the flesh. And His name was given a name that is above every other name, Jesus. And at the mention of that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let me tell you something. The first Christmas... Cancel loneliness forever. Because now Christ is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. Can somebody just clap your hands and shout with the voice of triumph that God is with us. And when he came, you know, nowadays the smartphone has everything you need, right? All the apps to get you to survive in life, your bank account, addresses, phone numbers, everything that you need. When Jesus came in a manger, he brought everything that you would ever need. Joy, peace, happiness. (laughs) And therefore we sing and we say joy to the world. And we got to tell everybody about the Savior. Was this beautiful or what? The representation of singing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's going to be more of this next Sunday. We won't be here in this auditorium, but we will be at the Modesto High Auditorium. How many bringing friends? You're telling people, our visiting friend, we want you to come out. We'll save you a seat. Let me tell you something. We are offering our community something that is greater than the Nutcracker Ballet. Something that is greater than the Christmas carol. This is not just a production. This is kingdom of heaven with us. Emmanuel, God is with the spirit of God that is here. We are transferring to a a greater auditorium. And people are going to feel the presence of God. I need three things from every church member next Sunday. All right. Number one is I need everybody just to be available. Amen. If there's some seats um, along your row, you let the ushers know. If we need some ushers, we want you to, you know, volunteer as an usher. Um, we need some to help um, pass out the cookies after the, um, the king is here. You know, please volunteer yourself. The second thing is we need every church member to smile next Sunday. Amen. We want... What to decorate our auditorium, not just the lights, and we're going to have some cool things going on on the platform, but it's going to be the smile on each face, the joy of the Lord. Amen. So how many are going to bring your smile next week? Amen. Bring your smile. And the third thing is, with the exception of the first song, because it's, uh, I think it's starting to look like a lot like Christmas. But after that song, it's all about Jesus, and we want every hand raised up in the auditorium. Every believer that has accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior through the whole time while the, the, the praise team and, and, and the production staff is presenting the King is here. We want everybody to be worshiping God. This is the greatest gift that we can give our community, and that is the presence of God. And we want everybody, this isn't a show. This isn't something to be entertained. This is a worship experience, and we want every believer. Let's try it right now. Stretch out your hand. Amen. Could you imagine thousands of people, a thousand auditorium with every hand raised up like that? 
singing songs to the risen king. Amen. This is going to change our community and it's going to change our world. We might have some official, you know, some good people there. Amen. That for the first time will, you know, will be there. And we want everybody to just to bring just the heart of worship. And we're so excited for this. Amen. Last week we talked about give yourself a Christmas gift. Fight for your mind. I want to preach for a few moments on the subject, your pastor's wish list. I'm going to give you six things that is a must-have for Christmas. I mean, remember Oprah Winfrey had the, the wish list or must-haves. Oprah Winfrey's favorite things. This is Pastor Gary's favorite things. And I want to talk to you today for a few moments on six things that you need to give yourself for Christmas. Amen. I want us to go to Psalms 118, verse 24. I mean, you know, it, it Macy's has your, the top Christmas items. You go to Toys R Us or Target and the 10 must-haves. Today, I'm going to talk about the six must-have that you must give yourself for Christmas. We're also excited that somebody received the greatest gift on the face of the earth and is going to be baptized here today right after our, the message. Amen. Anybody else looking for the greatest gift, I want to let you know you'll find it here today. We got towels. We got hairspray. We got mousse. We, we got those little, I don't know, you make ponytails. Crunchies, I, I don't know what they're called. I, I mean, what, if you need something, it's like, I can't get baptized unless I have that. Please let an usher know. We'll go to Walmart and get it for you so you can get baptized tonight. This is how important salvation is. Amen for us. Psalms 118, verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. What's the date today? December the 14th. December 14th is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. And we will be glad in it. Amen. Pastors must have. You may be seated. There's a saying that says, Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift, and that is why it's called the present. The best present you can give yourself is to live in the present. Amen. The best present you can give yourself is to live in the present. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I love it in Spanish because it says rejoice in the Lord always. I insist that you rejoice always. It is the will of God for us to rejoice always, which includes today. We've been talking about how you need to pick your fights. And one of the fights that you need to fight for is your mind. Amen. If you lose you, your mind, you lose everything. And so you need to fight for your mind because the devil wants to destroy your mind. We talked last week about what is a healthy mind. A healthy mind is living in the present. Your reality is not yesterday, it's not tomorrow, it is right now. Everything else is a wish list. Everything else is um, your imagination. But your reality is right now. Your reality is you cannot afford the Outback Steakhouse. All you can afford is the value menu. But thank God you will be fed. Amen. That is your reality. Yesterday will lead to regret. Tomorrow will lead to worry. God wants you to be 
in the present. And if there's any gift you can give yourself, and that is to fight for your mind. So let, let, let's go down the, the list real quick. The number one gift you need to give yourself this Christmas is you need to learn to talk back. Amen. The greatest and the ultimate gift you can give yourself this Christmas is to talk back. Not to your spouse. I saw the young people. No, uh, not, to your, not to your boss, not to your parents. I'm talking about talk back to the devil and remind him, devil, I don't believe a word you tell me. I am a child of the most high king. I got hope. I got peace. I got happiness. And most of all, I got eternal life. Somebody this year needs to end off the year talking back to the devil and say, devil, you try to destroy me in January. You try to destroy me in April. You said I was going to lose my mind in April and May. You said I was going to lose my family in September. But I got one thing to tell you. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I got eternal life for whoever believeth in him. Jesus Christ should not perish, but have ever. I wish I had somebody to get some spiritual get on this into your Christmas uh, spirit and say devil I will be victorious uh, I will not backslide and we will not end in divorce God is with me and if God is with me who can be again I wish I had somebody take off your jungle undo your shoelace and say devil I'm gonna fight for my marriage I'm gonna fight for my mind I'm gonna fight to get out of addictions I will not die like this I go, somebody needs to talk to I will not die like this. It will not end like this. I'm not going to end the year like this. Amen. You got to learn to talk back. Amen. Devil tells you you're sick. No, I'm healed. I'm healed. I, I have one nephew I won't mention who it is. Um, you know, I'll pray for him and I say, how you feeling? I'm still sick. You feeling better? No. You know, he just likes to stay home from school. You know, let, let me tell you something. You need to talk back. Young lady, you need to say, I will live a life of integrity and of purity. And I will not let the world take advantage of me. I will uphold my life. Come on, men. I'm not going to give my life to addictions. I'm not going to give my life to gangs and other things. God is in me. Emmanuel, God is with us. Come on, somebody. How many of you have hope today that God is in you right now? Turn to your neighbor. I don't care if you don't like them. Guess what? You better love them because God is with them right now. He's fighting for the battles right now. You need to look at your neighbor and say, you're a survivor, aren't you? God is with you. God is with you. You're not alone. Somebody left you. Somebody gave up on you. Somebody walked out of your life. You married somebody this year, but I got something to tell you. God is with you. God is in you. God is fighting for you. You are not alone. God is beside you. The angels of God are going. I wish I had somebody for 30 seconds just to get a on your feet, jump as high as you can and say, God is with me right now. Mm, shut up. Lay your hand on your mouth and say, I've anointed my mouth right now to talk back to the devil. Amen. My kids will return. My kids will be saved. This marriage isn't going to end this way. I'm going to find my way out of depression and discouragement and all the things that the enemy tells you and feeds into your mind. I want to let you know that is not your reality. He wants to bring fear so that you can feed off your imagination. But you got something greater than your imagination and fear. You got Jesus. Isn't it amazing right now you might not have everything, but you have everything because you got Jesus. Amen. Some of you crying because you don't got your new iPhone, Mega 6.54. You're not getting a, a BMW with a big ribbon. But guess what? You got a sound mind. I said, what's the point of having a BMW and a big house and you're crazy? 
and it's an empty hell. You better thank God that whatever you have, you got mine to enjoy it. And thank God, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's better than selling drugs. It's better being out in the world. It's better than being manipulated. I'm free. I'm free from everything. Amen. You got to learn to talk back. Amen. And one of the, the presents you got to give yourself is... Let's say this is your president box. Amen. The first thing you're going to, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to declare by the power of your mouth that guess what? I am going to enjoy today. This is a pastor's must have that every AJC member need to have this Christmas is the declaration I will enjoy today. <laughs> this is a day that the Lord has made. I don't got another day like this. I'm Amen. This is why when you can say, I'm going to enjoy this day, you'll love the people all around you. Because you know that nobody is here forever. And while we have everybody in this house, why don't we be grateful that this isn't a funeral? We're not here to bury you. I'm not reading your eulogy. You made it this week. You made it this year. We got two more weeks to go. Come on, devil. I want to remind you, I'm still here. It didn't end out the way that the devil wanted you. You got to learn to enjoy today. Amen. I mean, got some good Christian jokes. I love jokes. Amen. I, I, I love spending time with Brother Matt. Man, how many glad that he's here today? Wasn't he a blessing? And he, he, he still submitted to his, to Pastor Geary. I said, Pat, I said, Matt, this is your church. Go and sing during the offering time. Oh. Amen. How many know that this is still his family? Amen. Amen. God has placed him, you know, to another part of the kingdom of God, but this is still his church family. Amen. He left single. He came back with a beautiful wife. Amen. Amen. We're going to enjoy today. Man, I enjoyed all of the singing. I told my wife, I said, Brother Bosch should just dedicate his whole life to sing Christmas songs. That's powerful. My goodness. I said, I would buy all the albums. Play them all throughout the year. You got to enjoy it because there's people that are deaf that cannot hear the sounds that you're hearing here today. Amen. You, you, there's some kids listening to some crazy lyrics that their parents are booming on the boom box. Dropping it like it's hot. I'm going to go kill your dad because he didn't pay child support. Every other word is an F-bomb. But thank God that we have an environment here today that we can say, oh, come let us adore him. And there's songs of victory and there's songs of hope. Come on, I don't know why you're discouraged. I don't know why you're upset. I'm giving myself a gift today. I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts. Amen. Church, you say enjoy your life. Amen. Because it's a gift from God. Let me tell you something. There is nothing normal today. There is nothing normal. This is a miracle from God. Do you know what it took to get you to church today? Do you know the miracle it took for you to get your car working? And to get on the freeway and all the angels directing traffic? To keep you from not dying on your way to church? And it's by the grace of God that you're here and that you are in good health. There are people watching us because they're in the hospital, because they can't make it a church because of sickness. But by the grace of God, the last time you saw your joints were working, your hands are uplifting, your head, your, you could talk. I wish somebody would just real quick, 30 seconds, thank God for your body. I don't care if it's skinny. I don't care if it's fat. I don't care if it's round. And God loves every body shape. Use it for the glory of God. Amen. 
I'm going to enjoy this day. After this day, I'm going to a family's house after from Spanish ministry. They're making me homemade tamales right now. My God. My God, I'm, I'm living in divine destiny. And then I'm going home, and at 6 o'clock, Brother Alonso is bringing me some brownies. Mama's bringing me some wine cake. Pray for me. Mama's making some homemade chocolate ice cream, chocolate cake. I'm going to enjoy this day. I don't care about the calories. I don't care about the problems tomorrow. Let the problems tomorrow worry about itself. I'm alive here today. I got you today. I'm not worrying about you being in the hospital or locked up in prison or being addicted. This is a good day to celebrate. We made it. Hallelujah. I dare somebody real quick, right where you're at, just thank God that you're here today and you're gonna enjoy every second, every moment, every hour, because it didn't have to end this way. You should have been crazy. You could have died. You could have been out in the world. You could have been bitter. You could have been resentful. But by the grace of God, he carried you this far. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Listen, next Sunday or the Sunday after that, Brother Mike can say, Pastor, can't play for you. Brandon can say, Kim, mm, I'm leaving, going somewhere else. The little drummer boy over here can say, I can't play for you. Brother Julian says, you know what? I'm done playing for you. But let me tell you something. Since we got all of them, let's have a good time. Because you don't know what tomorrow's gonna hold. You don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. But while you got it. You'll be surprised next Sunday, the person sitting next to you, they're backslidden. They done left the church. So while they're still here, thank God for them. Thank God for them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I did somebody to say, no, I'm enjoying the presence of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, somebody. While you got feet, use them. While you got hands, use them. And if you can't walk, you tell the brethren, let's go run. We're going to have church. I wish somebody real quick. Mama, we made it. We made it. Our third Christmas without pop. But we made it. You could have been depressed. You could have been discouraged. But by the grace of God, we're going to enjoy this day. We're going to enjoy it. With everything that we got. And everything so beautiful. Little pomsetas, little lights. Thank God. I want us real quick. Turn to 10 people, give them a big hug. Tell them I appreciate you. I thank God for you. I'm enjoying church. Just having you in the house of the Lord here today. I said, come on. Come on. We're going to make it. And whatever and however we're gonna enjoy it we're gonna enjoy it Amen. you got a choice to be bitter or better I choose to be better here today amen If I wasn't full of the Holy Ghost, I would be on the newspaper with all the crazy people at Walmart. 
pushing me out of the way. I'm trying to find a parking spot. Hey, Amen. Man, we're going to enjoy this day. I'm going to enjoy Christmas. Listen, if your kid doesn't show up, enjoy the other kids that are there. Always overemphasizing the rebellious kids. They're just like me right now. Oh, so-and-so didn't go to church, so I'm just going to preach about it. Come on, let's enjoy the ones that are here. Listen, if you didn't have a savings plan for Christmas, it's too late. I'm not giving you a loan. You should have downgraded your cable bill. You have money to pay $300 for your cable, but now it's Christmas. I don't have no money. The church is the bank. The church ain't no bank. Well, I'm going to just go get a job at Walmart. You ain't going to get a paycheck before Christmas. So what are you going to do in reality? You're just going to bake cookies. Because that's all you got. You cannot go, I should have saved. I should have planned. I should have done that. Let me tell you something. A healthy mind will take advantage of the reality that you are in right now. Amen. Well, last year we had hand. Well, you had two jobs. Now with just one person working, you're going to have rice and beans. Amen. And Rice Krispies. Because the past was the past, but today is different. And what we need to do is we need to ask God, you may be seated. Number two, the second gift. Everyone here at AJC need, needs to give yourself is I will be grateful for everything. I will be grateful for everything. Amen. I will be grateful for everything. Matthew chapter 6 verse 27 says, Can any one of you by warring add a single hour to your life? Amen. Well, I just don't know how Chris, hey, listen, it's in two weeks. You're already in the future. You can't control it. Just enjoy. You're at church today. You're at church right now. Take advantage of it. Amen. Enjoy the people that are here today. I will be grateful for everything. And I say grateful. We need to have a childlike heart, church. You know, little kids, it doesn't take much to please them. I mean, you yell at them and then say, I'm sorry, they'll, they'll forgive you and they'll go play. They'll move on. Easy to forgive. Unlike some of you, they're still bitter. Resentful from the past. Remember, you cannot control the past. I mean, you know, when your kids were like two or three, they loved macaroni and cheese. Right? You could feed them macaroni. My son, one of my sons, he could eat oatmeal three times a day, seven days a week. And if we had oatmeal for dinner, he would be appreciative. Lord forbid if we don't have steak, we're throwing a fit. Because we can't afford a new coach purse for Christmas. And your husband can't get you the coach. If you would just go get yourself a little second seasonal job to balance out the economy during Christmas, maybe you would get yourself a coach keychain. <laughs> Amen. How many were blessed this past Tuesday with the bishop from Kenya, Bishop Duncan, <laughs> Bishop Samuel from Tanzania. We were so blessed. We were, we were hearing all that one time. The bishop of Tanzania in his, in his language and then English and then translated to Spanish. He was powerful, trilingual. Amen. Listen, Bishop Duncan from Kenya told us that the first time he got a pair of pants was when he was 12. 
When he was 12, he got his first set of pants and shoes. That means for 12 years, he was just walking around with a big T-shirt, he said. So, so why can't you enjoy life right now? Really, really, why can't you smile right now? Jimmy, you're so over-spiritual. I just love Jesus. I pray all the time. Then why can't you smile? Because you know what? If you prayed long in the presence of God, I guarantee you, you would come out like, Woo! But some of you think you pray. I'm more spiritual than all you. <laughs> yeah, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. And have it overflowing. It's going to be in your countenance. It's going to be, you know, just, man, everyone that you see. Man, how you doing? God bless you. Hey, so good to see you. Hey, man. Praise God. I know some of us are like, hmm. Man, tell you something. You got to be grateful for everything. Uh, my, my mom, she made this awesome chicken mole for the missionaries. And there was plenty of leftovers. And you know what they said? They only wanted one serving. They would not get a second serving. And they said, they were telling my wife and I, they said, you know, we're trying to adjust our stomachs to go back to eating one meal a day. Because when we get back to Kenya, our stomachs are going to be used to eating as much as we want. But in reality, we only eat one time because that's all we can get. You know, we can't seem to be grateful for the small things that we have. The small blessings, whether it's just a little God, or go, thank God for chicken soup. Thank God. Cereal again? Boy, let me take out my shoe. Didn't you hear the pastor? <laughs> People in Kenya have one meal. Be grateful you have cereal and top ramen for dinner. That's enough carbs to keep you full. You'll show up entitled. I need this. I deserve this. What you deserve is death. What we deserve is nothing. Like what God has given us and been so merciful. And if we could enjoy the life, we could be connected in today, and then we could be grateful for everything that we have. I want you to just raise your hand, everybody. Gratefulness. Gratefulness, church. Thank you, God, that you came. Everything else really is superficial. If it doesn't lead back to you. The next time you're complaining about, you know, not having new shoes, remember Bishop Duncan. He, he, he says that all of the, the people in Kenya, they buy used clothes that people send out and ship out over there. And yeah, we'll backslide because we can't have the latest winter wardrobe. We got so much to be grateful for. Like I told the Spanish, I'll tell you, I am so grateful for each and every one of you. We love and pray for you. And we are so grateful. You know why? Because tomorrow there is no guarantee. And we've heard tragic news all of our life. And just to have us gather all the way from the balcony full, all the way to the back to right here. Everyone that is here today, we are so grateful because today is a miracle. And you are a miracle from God. You are a miracle from God. The third must have for the Christmas season is you must declare, I will sleep. Come on, you need to give this to yourself. 
is called sleep. You need to go to sleep. Amen. Rock and like a week. You know, it's the problem is we lack sleep. And when we lack sleep comes stress, comes things. We, we mentally, we cannot even make decisions. You need to declare, I'm going to sleep. Amen. Then you want to be drinking Starbucks at 11 p.m. You crazy. Amen. You need a little chamomile tea. And they say, I will sleep. And somebody else say, I will sleep. I'm going to give myself a good Christmas gift this year. I'm going to go to sleep. Nobody's going to wake me up until God wakes me up. And even at that, I'll give them a 30-minute extension. Please give me 30 minutes. The next thing, this is so important, is you need to tell yourself, I understand everything has an expiration date. <laughs> you need to understand that everything in this life has an expiration date. That God has created everything in seasons. And that even a fruit tree needs to rest. Because it's going to give forth fruit. In its season. Amen. Whatever is happening in your life is not permanent. Hallelujah. Good or bad. I love how when people get jobs, they forget about Jesus. They get an extra thousand. Oh, we're too, we're too bougie, too. You know, let me tell you something. That could be gone. Amen. We get some, you know, chubby people, then they get skinny, and then they don't know where Jesus is. Like they lost him with the weight. <laughs> Amen. I mean, they used to bounce all over this place. Now we can't even get them to stand up. Walking. All I need to do is tempt you with a Twinkie. And we'll see how fast it changes. Amen. Nothing is permanent. Therefore, enjoy what you have today. Right now. Come on. Enjoy your suits because they won't fit. Come on. Enjoy your hair. When's the last time you had a praise break for your hair? When's the last time you got yourself out of discouragement and say, I have no money? The devil's attacking, but at least I got hair. Thank God. When's the last time you praise God for your hair? Because it's fallen. Nothing is permanent. Thank God for health. Man. When we get a bigger auditorium, 20 years from now, after the, the auditorium, we're going to have our church folks right now in walkers running down the aisles because that's all we know how to do is be jubilant in our praise. Let, let me tell you something. This health doesn't last forever. Nothing in this world is permanent. Your job isn't permanent. I love this. Friends aren't permanent. Amen. You got to learn to guard yourself. Amen. Love all people, but be open. They'll walk out on you. Your kids, you got 18 years with them, but you know what? They could turn. Nothing is permanent. Your husband, you could go psycho any moment. Your wife could go desperate housewives at any moment. Because nothing is permanent. But let me tell you something. In the midst of change, God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
That means even when life is changing, God is still constant and consistent. And he's still faithful. And he still loves us. And that's why even in the midst of problems, you can lift yourself up and say, guess what? Problems don't last always. But Jesus is forever. And his goodness is forever. And I'm going to worship God because he never changes. Hallelujah. That's why you got to give yourself a Christmas gift so that when you get into 2015, every trial, every spiritual attack against your home, you need to remind the devil, listen, this situation has happened, but it will, it has an expiration date. I want you to prophesy over your neighbor and say whatever you're going through, it has an expiration date. It doesn't last always. Reaping may endure for a night, but honey, the sun's coming up. The morning's about to rise, and joy comes in the morning. I'm going through some things, but it's just forming me to be stronger and to have the capacity to talk back, but it will change. And when it changes, I can still lift up my hands and say, God is forever faithful. God is forever good. I wish somebody could prophesy over your spirit and say, I'm going to praise God even in the midst of problems because it's going to have an expiration date. Amen. My goodness. I've been hearing all these things on Facebook and social media. Can't wait for 2015. Good things are happening in 2015. I said, God, I believe in 2015, but I believe that you have a blessing for me right now. I believe that AJC is entering into our moment and has entered into our moment right now. I wish somebody here today would just praise God. Why? Because whatever you're going through is about to change. Thank God for your health. Thank God for your friends. Thank God for life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There will be an end to every crisis. Therefore, I'm going to praise God because something is about to turn around in my life. 30 seconds. I dare somebody to praise God because you know everything in life has an expiration date. That includes the devil. That includes problems. That includes situations. Amen. Real quick, don't even look at your neighbor. Just tell yourself everything that I'm going through has an expiration date. So I'm going to praise God because God is good and he is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church and say whatever you're going through, it has an expiration date. But Brother Mike, while you got those good hands, why don't you praise God? While you got your feet, why don't you use them to glorify God? While you got your fingers, I wish somebody real quick get out of your pew. While you got your feet, somebody praise Him. Brother Delgado should not be alive here today. He's had open heart surgeries. The doctor said his heart is failing. But I want to let you know nothing's going to stop him because God had the last say so. Months ago, Brother Moses went from living on a sofa to eating whatever he can eat to now having a degree, now having a paycheck, now looking for a place to rent. I tell you, whatever you're going through, there is a change coming, and you need to talk back and remind the devil joy to the world. The Lord has come. The Lord has come. And he's come to bring me joy. 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 He's come to bring me joy.
provision I believe right now people are sending checks people are sending donations people are going to financially support the work of the Lord because our expiration of financial lack has now been cancelled hallelujah that's it my God Brother Arcovio, Pastor Romo said by the end of the year, God is going to fill this house. God is going to sell it. Look at all these people. Look at all these friends. We're going to enjoy this day. My God. We're going to enjoy tomorrow. We're going to enjoy Tuesday. We're going to enjoy Wednesday. Brother Luciano, so grateful your friend joined us today. Does it go out there with you guys? This is a young, this is a brother from, that they go and feed on Sunday mornings. He came to church today. God bless you. This is what we're going to do. We wait for the clock to go down. And when it starts to 10, 9, 8 on New Year's Eve, we get excited because guess what? We're going into a new year. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to count down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And then we're going to just shout and rejoice because guess what? You've just entered into the blessings of God for today. God told the church this morning, I believe it's applicable for today. He says, build your future on today, not your past. We all have regrets. We all have made mistakes. We all have fallen. We all have made decisions based off this flesh. But I want to let you know here today, that was your past. By the grace of God, you are here. And God says, Build your future of today. Because my mercies and my grace are new right now. We're going to do, we're going to count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 7. And then we're going to praise God. We're going to glorify God. This young man is going to come and he's going to be baptized. And this is just, you know what? 2015, we have already entered into the blessings of God. And we're going to enjoy this day. Listen, we're not as rich as we used to be. We're not physically able as we used to be. But guess what? God has been good. And so at the count of, when we go do the countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, we're going to shout, we're going to praise God. And then I want you to get as many people, give them the biggest hug and be grateful for them today. You ready? You ready? Today's the day. New. Made new. All things are new. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, yeah! That's it! Shut your mouth up! Drive me home! I'm enjoying this! I'm enjoying the presence of God! Some tamales. I'm gonna get some chocolate cake. I'm gonna get a bunch of hugs after church. That's it. Now go find two or three people. Give them an embrace.
Guzman. As a minister of the gospel, today we will bow, baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And you might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then your name will be written in the last book of life and no man will ever be able to erase your name. to the Lord publicly that it says you know what I accept you as my Lord and Savior and you have not done something dramatically and drastically to get in these cold waters it's cold but it's worth it I tell you what amen if you have not done so today's your day don't go home wishing you would have got baptized raise your hand and say I want to get baptized anybody in this place anybody says I want to get baptized we got one in the front over here anybody else I'll stick in here as long as as long as possible. All right, yeah. Anybody else? For the team, let's talk to him, man. That's it. One more time. Turn around, praise. It's going to expire. I'm going to come through this. I want us to talk back for a few moments and remind the devil, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're coming out of this. We will fight this. Now I want you to get your spouse by the hand or get your children by the hand. And I want you to give God a praise because we're coming out. I said we're coming out. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. That's it, my friend. In the name of Jesus. I will enjoy this day. moment we're leaving but those that want to just stay God bless you let's keep on praising let's keep on shouting this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice I will rejoice I know there's some babies in the Lord. Let's do this real quick. You pick your right foot up and you put your right foot down. You put your left foot up and you put your left foot down. And then you think about what God has done for you and what God has brought you from and that God has given you his spirit. And when you think about the goodness of Jesus, you just let the Holy Ghost take you. At the count of three, everybody jump and let the Holy go. One, two, three. That's it. I'm going to rejoice because this is the day that the Lord has made. 